Pavelski in the left wing corner. Backhands one off the outside of the net and goes flying. He gets blown up by Dumba. Pavelski is hurt. Get a look at it right here. Puck's gone. I mean, to me, for Pavelski, once he releases this puck, he doesn't anticipate the hit. Dumba does look like he drives up. It'll be interesting to see how they call this. I mean, does he? It looks like he gets shoulder. Looks like he gets shoulder on shoulder, but there was a, an upwards momentum. I just think Pavelski didn't anticipate the hit because the puck was gone. It'll be interesting to get Dave's, uh, Dave Jackson's thoughts on this. Dave Jackson, your thoughts? Well, guys, I'm thinking what uh, Bush just said there. He elevated on him. That play was slightly late. The puck was gone. Keep in mind, if they call a major penalty here, they're able to review it, and then they could rescind it or give two minutes. It'd be interesting to see what the call is made. But he did elevate right there. He comes up a little bit, changes his body position on the hit. It'll be interesting to see what they say. Panel and puck. Matthews wins the draw. That shot changed direction. And Vasilevsky going the wrong way, and now Chernak is down and slow to get up. And this is going to be an interference call. Wes McCauley in the neutral zone. Is, you know, Michael Bunting, who's been the focus of so much of the calls and the officials, he drew one early. And here is, you could see John Cooper looking down at the video, maybe didn't see it in real time to try to see exactly what happened. Hedman's gone to the room and see what happened here. Uh, there is the interference was the call. The question is going to be is a contact to the head and watch punting there as he gets Chernak and his reaction is huge. And the play is under review there. It did look like the elbow right up into the chin as Chernak went down. Hit to the head and that's what the discussion is and as they said for John Cooper, wow the back end which we were talking about is nowhere near as deep as it has been in years past. And Barron's going to come to the bench here. He got a nasty cut on the face. He might have caught a skate in all that pile. And he is bleeding. And then all of a sudden, watch Barron there fighting away as he goes in. And there's the skate that comes up and catches him. And that puck was close underneath Braden McNabb. And here's Barron vacating the ice. I mean, he got up, he came off, both his eyes were open. So the cut looks to be maybe on the above his or right eye yeah. or just to the side of his right eye. As we look at Carter driving the Vegas defense back, dropping it to Shifley. What a toe drag as Shifley tries to go far side low. And a nice save by Bressois. As we look at the skate, and again, the skate didn't kick him. He fell into it. But that, I mean, hey, it's a good thing it didn't kick him. Jared McCann, short-handed, stopped by Georgiev. And McCann throttled into the boards after the puck had left the ice. And McCann is shaken up. Huge hit in the corner. Following that chance from McCann, he finds himself in alone, short-handed. It's a quick shot off, and as the puck goes into the netting and out of play, there's a huge collision in the corner from that man right there, McCarr. The athletic trainer, Mike Boy. It's a great feed to get McCann in alone and watch out of the McCarr gets a piece of that shoulder, rides him right into the boards. Not sure McCann's expecting to get hit in that situation as the puck's going out of play. Lots to sort out here in Seattle. Timo Meyer. Oh, oh blasted by Truba and not getting up. Another one of those big hits by Truba. A couple of games ago, Meyer got hit like this at the blue line by Braden Schneider. He was able to bounce off the check. The difference in weight and force of this hit changes the outcome. Look, Truba's coming off the bench, so Meyer doesn't see him. The door of the Ranger bench is open.
Well, let's bring in Dave Jackson. You know, Truba has a reputation, a guy who will hit you high, but it's clean. Of course, he uh, knocked Sidney Crosby out of the series in the first round for a while last year. Jax, do you have any problem with that hit? Uh, it certainly felt like they were trying to get under the skin of the 20-year-old who's become a really important player for the Leafs. He was on the line with Ryan O'Reilly that was going up against Bennett and Kachuk. That's a pretty big assignment for a guy who was playing his 10th NHL game. So this is disappointing to see, of course, for the Leafs. You hope for the best uh, from him. Martinez didn't hit the net. On the counterattack, it's McDavid with some room. McDavid keeps, shoots, rebound. And again, a save Brossois is hurt. He's hurt. Laurent Brossois is not moving right now. Martinez hovering over top here. Aiden Hill directly going down the tunnel. He did not like what he saw there, and it was on the save. McDavid goes far side, so he's got to come down in the butterfly, extend the right pad out to make an excellent save on a hard shot by McDavid. And does not move after that, obviously tweaking something on that movement. A little slow to get up here and with good reason. Wants to make sure he can, and you can, he can't. He can't get up himself. He needs some help to get off the ice. We're going to see Aiden Hill step into the game here. He went immediately down the tunnel when he saw what happened. And for... Laurent Brassois, he's dealt with some hip injuries throughout his career. Hip surgery has had to deal with that, being much more dedicated to his physicality and conditioning. And here's the chance again by McDavid, the first save. But when he pushes across Brassois, you could just tell right away something wasn't right, and he never moved for a while. And you know what's so tough about that, Louis, to watch is that for Laurent Brassois, he, he himself said he never knew if this opportunity was going to yeah. come again, given all the goalies that the Golden Knights had this season. And only starting 11 regular season games, he's the playoff starter.